But we'll bring you right back down to us. Steph will anyway. <laughs> We're talking about how people are employed. That's the idea. The new ways people are employed. Self-employment, yeah. short-term contracts. Yeah, it's a lot more flexible now in terms of how people can get work. And, it, and there's something now which is growing called the gig economy. So I just want to explain a little bit about that this morning. Morning, everyone. Yeah, the gig economy is basically referring to people who are paid for the individual gigs that they do for a company. And by gigs, I don't obviously just mean music gigs. It's referring to things, uh, people who like taxi drivers or couriers who will get their work through apps like Uber and delivery and there are estimated to be something like 1.3 million people who now work this way and that number is growing as well it provides a flexible way of working but there is growing criticism about the employment rights that these type of workers don't get now it's led to a number of legal challenges and a major review is due to be published in the summer about this well with me now is Nigel McKay who's an employment solicitor at Lee Deer which is representing some delivery couriers Mackay I'm suddenly Realise you the way you pronounce your surname. Sorry about that. Um, so um, just tell us, Nigel. You know you're bringing you're involved in this case at the moment where delivery drivers are, are unhappy about the employment rights they're not getting. Just explain what they're unhappy about. That's right. So at the moment, um, delivery treats its riders as self-employed. So what it says is that they are effectively running their own business um, in, when they carry out their their job as delivering food. And what we say is that is a mislabeling. The real relationship so we say actually they're, they're workers or even employees um, like someone working in it in any other job um, and there's lots of different factors that you look at when you determine that and um, in this case um, what we see is the the control in particular that the company exerts over its um, workers so it requires them to carry out their work in a certain way um, it carries out a recruitment process um, it effectively has a performance management process. If they don't do the, enough jobs in a certain amount of time, that they risk being terminated from the system. And it requires them to wear a uniform and carry a box with the, the company's logo on. So it's, it's really difficult to see how they can really be self-employed when they're so obviously integrated and part of this business. So, so what are the rights that they want that they feel that they don't have? Like what type of things are we talking about? So, well, in particular, um, they are looking to ensure that they're going to be paid minimum wage. Um, at the moment, there's no guarantee for people who are genuinely self-employed that they'll get minimum wage. And that's because they will get paid for the individual jobs and they might only get one an hour, which is less than what the minimum wage would be or something like that. Is that the problem? Um, essentially, that is the problem, although Deliveroo has a mix, actually, of how it pays people. It has some shifts and some uh, pay per drop, as it calls it. But yes, it works out when it, when that, in that kind of arrangement that they could be getting less than the minimum wage. Right. Um, sorry. And, then I'll go on. and the other things they want as well is to do with holiday pay and sick pay. And so things. holiday pay and potentially sick pay as well, yes. Um, so any worker is entitled to holiday, so to accrue holiday when they work, and they're entitled to be paid for that. And at the moment, delivery riders don't get that. Um, the other important thing that workers are entitled to is protection from discrimination. Um, so if you're a, a worker, that your employer shouldn't discriminate against you. And something that we found talking to delivery riders is that um, delivery has introduced this a new rule that 16 and 17 year olds can no longer work for them and that's potentially age discrimination um, so if we can show that they're workers which we believe they are then also they'd be entitled not to be discriminated right. against in that way. Uh, delivery say on this they say uh, they're unable to comment on the latest claim but said we're proud to offer flexible well-paid work to over 15,000 self-employed UK riders we're going to continue to work closely with them to ensure that as a company as the company continues to grow in the UK, our riders continue to benefit from that growth. So uh, there's lots of riders who were with delivery who are very happy. You're representing 20 of them who are unhappy and they're saying there's 15,000 here who work for them. So, well, we, we've got um, about 20 at the moment who we've started proceedings for, but we've got lots of other people joining the claim as well. Um, I think it's, it's quite difficult to, to establish people who are happy and unhappy. Mm. One thing I would say is that no, nothing in our claim is going to prevent flexibility. So it, just because workers work flexibly doesn't mean that they shouldn't be entitled to workers' rights. And we're not mm. saying people should be forced to work a certain amount of time. We're just saying when they are working, they should be getting the rights that they're entitled to. Yeah, interesting. Um, Nigel, thank you very much for your time this morning. And that's it for me for now.